Hey guys, it's Scott Bryce from Performance Motorsport in Australia. Today we're just going to talk a little bit about the bearings that we use in some of our uh, differentials, our transfer cases, portal hubs and also our uh, floating hubs. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the difference between a bearing for a large ball or a large roller and something that has a much smaller ball and a much smaller roller. Um, in our transfer cases, portal hubs, etc., we always use large bearings so we don't have any splines and outputs, output shafts. We have the gears directly drilled with the CV bolt pattern directly in there, so there's no splines, no couplings, nothing to break. But when we're running a bearing uh, that's very small in profile, the balls are very small in diameter, therefore the rotational speed of the ball going around the large circumference is very, very high. Whereas if we have a larger bearing, same diameter, but a larger, a larger bearing with larger rollers and larger balls, if it was a ball bearing or roller bearing, the diameter of this roller or the diameter of the ball is much larger. Therefore, the number of times it rotates going around the same diameter or the same circumference is a lot less than something with much smaller balls. So we have to be careful to make sure that we don't overspeed the bearing in the application. Now one of the worst applications for overspeeding things is tail shafts and transfer cases and running a bearing like this in a transfer case probably not going to work very well being that we're running at 6-7000 RPM. And uh, here's an example of, of one of these here, one of our transfer case bearings, a very early design. We made the transfer case incredibly light, no splines, nothing to break. Unfortunately the bearing is very very small, you can see the size of the, the ball bearing in here. The rotational speed of that ball was so high that the bearings were turning blue every time we hit about 100, 115 miles an hour, maybe 120 miles an hour. After about 10 minutes of use, the transfer case would heat up and uh, we'd end up with a very, very hot transfer case. We tried different oils, we tried different viscosities, different oil levels, we had all the advice from the bearing companies. And let me tell you, these books are full of a lot of, a lot of information. And uh, typically we would uh, bypass probably the first 100 pages of these sorts of books and go straight to bearing selections and maximum rotating speeds. But what we found talking to bearing companies and lubrication companies, and you can't talk to one without talking to the other. After talking to a lubrication organisation and a bearing company, we found out a combination of a couple of things. One, running a small diameter ball or small diameter pin at high RPM, not ideal. Running a thick oil makes it even worse. And then we have the oil depth. The depth of oil is another thing that causes bearings to generate heat. So we went through a lot of testing in our travel over about two or three years with different oil levels, different viscosities, different height bearings. And we tried different size bearings with different height rollers and pins to try and figure out what, at what point the bearing can handle the, the high rotational speeds of transfer cases, etc. Even down to our wheel bearings, this is a bearing off of a, uh, a floating hub on the rear of our car. Um, very small bearing uh, roller diameter and the rotational speed of the wheel. Running an inferior grease, it was supplied to us by our previous sponsor, which we won't talk about. Um, the grease didn't handle the high RPM of the rollers. Even though the rotational speed of the bearing was very low and it was very much within limits of the bearing according to the manual the actual rotational speed of the roller and the grease that we were using ended up resulting in a significant bearing failure after only a couple of hours of, of use. So there's the results of the bearing failure. So I just wanted to explain that uh, we do a lot of work in working with these books and engineering data to try and understand how these bearings can operate what limits we can push them to, what oil viscosities we need to run out to try and make sure the bearings last as long as they can in a racing application. In addition to selecting the right bearing and the right lubrication, it's important not to over flood the bearing with too much oil or not have enough oil or use the wrong, wrong type of oil. Um, we've done a lot of work in our product designs and you might see some ports in this uh, pinion carrier here which uh, prevent our products from over lubricating the bearings and becoming heat generators. It took us nearly five years to understand why the pinions in our product at 100 miles an hour were generating a little bit more heat than the rest of the, the rest of the differential and uh, after lots of research and lots of reading of all these manuals and books and advice from lubrication engineers and bearing engineers we've determined the ultimate uh, uh, saturation point for a bearing being the amount of oil that the bearing needs to sit in. 
um, too much oil, the bearing generates heat, not enough oil, it'll obviously not get enough lubrication. So there's a point at which you need to make sure you, you keep that level uh, constant and our products have been engineered to have feeds into the pinions and then exits out of the pinions to ensure that the pinion bearings and all the bearings don't sit in too much oil and become heat generators and also uh, when they're sitting in thick oil and running around in saturated oil it robs a lot of horsepower so we try to make them very efficient they don't use a lot of horsepower they don't get hot they use the right lubrication to make sure that they don't fail and ultimately the customer gets the best possible product that, that uh, we can manufacture so guys i hope that explains a little bit about our bearings, why we've chosen them, why we've chosen some small rollers in some applications, large rollers in other applications. But in summary, if a bearing is running at really high speed, you cannot use a low profile bearing in a high RPM application um, without running some very, very thin oils, very, very low oil levels. Um, and if possible, you might need to increase the roller diameter to a larger ball to ensure that the ball is not running around that, that circumferential sort of speed at too high an RPM. So guys, I hope that explains that. Uh, stay tuned and we'll chop up some more technical videos shortly.